Once again, good morning and welcome to our Math 9 class. Today, let's have the last lesson for Chapter 5. Chapter 5 is all about quadrilaterals. And we have, we have um, discussed the different types of quadrilaterals. We also have discussed the parallelograms with two pairs of parallel sides. And we have discussed special parallelograms those are squares, rectangles, and rhombuses. And yesterday, we have discussed about trapezoids. Today, we'll have the last type of quadrilateral, and these are called kites. To start with, we need to recite today's memory verse, and it's found in Zechariah 2 verse 5. It says, Ho there, free, flee from the land of the north, declares the Lord. For I have dispersed you as the four winds of the heavens, declares the Lord. At the end of today's class, you need to answer your MVCA boosters. And it's about thanking God in kite flying. Have you ever flown a kite? How can the kite fly? Honestly, I am not a sporty person. I am not so good in flying kites. I think that my common sense doesn't fathom that. Or have you reflected on how the kite can fly as pushed by a force? That's the wind that you cannot see. What does this tell us of God's wonderful creation? At the end of this lesson, we'll be able to do two things. First, prove theorems on kites. And second, prove problems involving kites. And here's our venture activity. Let me introduce you the world's largest kite. Kite flying is popular in China, Japan, India, Indonesia, and the USA. The biggest kite in the world is Al Majid. The massive kite, which measures 2,673 square meters, was tested in Beijing, China. The kite's height is 66 meters and the width is 40.5 meters. It is the world's largest kite and it was flown in Qatar in 2018 to enter the Guinness Book of World Records. The kite was made in the colors of Qatar national flag with a picture of the Amir Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani. The kite named Al Majid kite is also called the glory kite, was a brainchild of Qatari poet Hussein Al Kayarin. So that is the world's largest kite, the Al Majid from Qatar. Now, this morning we'll talk about kites. For some of you, you, you are familiar with a kite because it is. It is your toy that you play. But you know what? Kite is a quadrilateral. And this morning, we are going to learn different features of a kite. Now, how do we describe or we define a kite? A kite is a quadrilateral whose two distinct pairs of adjacent congruent sides and whose opposite sides are not congruent. It's also called deltoid. So in a kite, the two adjacent sides, like the IT and IM, are congruent. While the other, the TE and the ME, are also congruent. Now, what are some parts of a kite? The first one is ends. What do you mean by ends? Ends are the common vertices of the congruent sides of a kite. So for example, IT and IM are congruent. So I is its end. Another, we have TE and ME. TE and ME are congruent. So E, the common vertex, is called the end. So our ends are I and E. Next, if you draw a line from one end to another end, this one, 
you look it looks like a mirror the line of reflection because the left is equal to the right the left is equal to the right this line that connects both ends we call it the symmetry line so for example in this drawing our symmetry line is ie or for some they call it the line of symmetry now let's have some theorems for the kite first theorem the diagonals of a kite are perpendicular to each other so with this one our diagonals are ie and tm right these are our diagonals and they are perpendicular to each other this is the sign for perpendicularity like this one excuse me for a while now so it means that in the intersection point we form right angles and each right angle measures 90 degrees and let's have this activity we find the measure of angle one and angle two in kite care c-a-r-e now with your chat boxes can you tell me what is the measure of angle one again what is the measure of angle one in the chat box feel free to participate what is the measure of angle one can you see my screen right this is angle one 90 degrees oh, very good ap it's 90 degrees and measure of angle one is 90 degrees now can you tell me ap why is it measuring 90 degrees it's half of 180 Hi, oh, yes, it's possible, but remember, wait for a while. Remember the theorem? The theorem states that the diagonals of a kite are perpendicular to each other. So these are our diagonals. So we form right angles here, right? Right angles. So angle one measures 90 degrees. Very good, AP. Next, how about angle two? What's the measure of angle two? You see you're forming here a triangle, right? What is the sum of all the angles in a triangle? Anyone, feel free to unmute your microphone or you can raise your hand. Okay. What is the sum of all the angles in a triangle? Can I call in Ali? Ali, do you know what's the sum of all the angles in a triangle? Oh, very good, Ali. That's 180 degrees. So we now have, if you see, 35 degrees this is 90 degrees and this is angle two so let's solve for the measure of angle two so we now have 35 degrees plus 90 degrees plus angle two measure of angle two equals 180 degrees now 30 plus 90 is 125 degrees plus measure of angle two equals 180 degrees. We move it to the other side. So we have measure of angle two equals 180 degrees minus 125 degrees. So the measure of our angle two is 55 degrees. Any questions? Or give me a thumbs up if you have understood for this exercise. Okay, very good. Let's go to the next theorem. Okay. The next theorem states that a diagonal of a kite 
divides a kite into two congruent triangles. So if you have seen here, it is a one diagonal. How do we name the congruent triangles? You start from one end, then go to the first congruent side, then to the second congruent side. So example, this is triangle ITE. It's congruent to triangle the other side, IME. So with this one, if you see this two, IT, side IT is congruent to side IM, this one. While side TE is congruent to side ME. And the last one, side IE is congruent to side IE. Now, what justifies this? You also say angle I is congruent to angle I. Angle T is congruent to angle M. Angle E is congruent to angle E. Here, the first and the first, the second and the second, the third and the third. We call this corresponding parts. You have this in your grade eight class. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. That's one. It means corresponding parts. The corresponding parts of two congruent triangles are congruent or in most of the books, we call this CPCTC, congruent parts of correspond, sorry, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Now, let's have this exercise. Remember, the diagonal of a triangle divides the kite into two congruent triangles. So let's name the congruent triangles. We have triangle. Can you name it in the chat box? If I'll have R, A, C, in what triangle is it congruent? Triangle R, A, C, R, A, C is congruent to what triangle? C R E C. Very good. So R E C. That's it. So let's start with the problem. In kite care, measure of angle A C R. Be very careful in labeling. A C R is just this one. Is twenty degrees. Measure of angle A is one hundred degrees. And measure of ARC is 60 degrees. If you see, if you add these three, the sum is 180 degrees. AC measures 10 centimeters. And AR measures 8 centimeters. Now, can you tell me what's the measure of segment CE? Let me call on Janine. What's the measure of CE? 10 cm. Very good. It's 10 cm. Because remember, they are congruent with this one. Next, can I call on Vance? What's the measure of segment ER? Vance? What's the measure of segment ER? How about Ali? Measure of segment ER. Very good. It's 8 cm. Next. Measure of angle E. Let me ask AP. What's the measure of angle E? This one. 
Where's AP now? AP, still there? Yes, ma'am. Yes, what's the measure of angle E? Angle E? Yes. Uh, 100, 100 degrees. Very good. How about Tatiana? What's the measure of angle ECR? ECR. Where's Tatiana? What's the measure of angle ECR? 60, ma'am. Hmm? 60? Kanisha? Oh. ECR. ECR. It's okay. Yes. Where's Tatiana? Oh, very good, Janine. That's 20 degrees. Let me give you a hint how to do it. Oh, no problem, Tatiana. Here, if you check, ECR. This is our congruent triangles, right? Do not depend on the drawing. You might get it wrong. ECR. So ECR, you check with the other one. It's congruent to ACR. So ACR and ECR have the same measures. You check. ACR is 20 degrees. So ECR is also 20. It means that our ERC is 60 degrees. Any questions? Let me go to the next one. The next theorem states that if a quadrilateral kite is a kite, then exactly one pair of opposite angles is congruent. So here, for example, um, how do I say this? It is based on the line of symmetry or the symmetry line. Once you draw the symmetry lines, then exactly this pair of opposite angles are congruent. So for example, T is congruent to angle M. In our previous one, in our previous exercise, this CR is our line of symmetry. So angle A is congruent to angle E. Now let's have an example. In kite care, C-A-R-E, angle R, you need to label it, measures 78 degrees. Angle C measures 24 degrees. Now, what is the measure of angle A and angle E? Now, can you tell me what's the relationship between angle A and angle E? In the chat box, tell me, what's the relationship of angles A and E? Are they congruent, supplementary? Uh, meet, uh, meet. Okay, let me call on Janine. What's the relationship between angles A and E? Are they congruent or supplementary? Congruent. Oh, they are congruent. Now remember our previous um, theorem? If you draw a line of symmetry, then these two opposite angles are congruent. We don't know what's the measure. So we say X. So if this is X, the other is also X. Now, you need to disregard our line of symmetry. 
because you'll be looking at one quadrilateral, quadrilateral kite. Now, remember that in a quadrilateral, the sum of all angles is 360 degrees. So we say that measure of angle A plus measure of angle C plus measure of angle R plus measure of angle E is equal to 360 degrees. What's the measure of angle A? It's missing. We write X plus the measure of angle C is 24 degrees. The measure of angle R is 78 degrees. And the measure of angle E is X equals 360 degrees. Let's add them. X plus X, 2X. 24 plus 78, <clears throat> 82, that's 102. Equals 360 degrees. We let it move to the other side. So we have 360 degrees minus 102 degrees. So 2x is equal to 258 degrees. Divide it all by 2. So our x is equal to, that's 125, 128, 129, 129 degrees. So the measure of angle A is X, that's 129 degrees. And the measure of angle E is X, that's another 129 degrees. Any questions? No questions? We go to the last exercise. The perimeter, again, what's the perimeter? The perimeter, I call it the fence. Why do I call it the fence? Because it's the distance around a polygon. So the perimeter of a kite is 64 cm. It's the whole 64 cm. The length of one of its sides is 14 cm, more than the half, half of the length of another. So we say, let X be the length of the first side. This one, X and X. What is the length of the second side? You read again, 14 cm more than, more than means plus. So 14 plus half the length of another. That's one half of X. This is now the second side. Find the length of each side of a kite. If it is a kite, these two are X because they are congruent. While the other two are 14 plus one half X. The other one is congruent. So it's 14 plus one half X still. Now let's add all the sides. X plus X, the first side, the congruent side, plus 14 plus one half X. That's the second side. And the other congruent side is still 14, Baba. Mahulaga. It's one half X equals 64. And let's add x plus x plus one half x plus one half x is three x. 14 plus 14 is 28 equals 64. Transfer it to another side. Three x equals 64 minus 28. So we have three x equals 36. Divide all by three, so our x is equal to 12. But we're not yet done. Remember, what's the first side? That's 12 cm. What's the second side? 
Let's substitute. 14 plus 1 half of 12. 1 half of 12 is 6. You add 14. The second side is 20 cm. Let's check. Okay? Let's draw our kite. 12, 12, 20, 20. That's 40 plus 24. The perimeter is 64. So our answer is correct. Do you have any questions? This ends our discussion for today.